Welcome back to Atlanta Falcons franchise here in Madden NFL 24. And as I've introed to a bunch of these last episodes, these games continue to be really close. I feel like we continue to win these really close games. However, things could be changing in the near future as our starting quarterback is out with an injury. But yeah, you can see these super close games. Some of them have resulted in double digit wins. But they've mainly been very close, high scoring. Of course, we had the close loss to the Saints, which was unfortunate. And some big wins in there against the Cardinals and the 49ers weren't too tough, even though this ended up being somewhat close. They scored 40 points on us. Our offense was just, you know, scoring at will. Now, here's the problem, as I mentioned. Our starting quarterback, Trey Lance, who is just significantly better than Jake Meeks, has torn his labrum out for the next four games now we're lucky that we're in a position already where this is probably going to be a playoff team regardless of trey lance the bucks are two and ten the saints are four and seven the panthers are only five and seven we're at nine and two we could lose these next four games and it really wouldn't even be that big of a deal because the nfc south is so terrible but we obviously don't want to lose those games we want to put ourselves in a position to have the best record in the nfc and get that first round by. Jake Meeks will be the starting quarterback for the next four games. I will name him officially as the starter. A 5'11", 209 pound rookie out of Texas Tech, only 21 years old, and he frustrates me. Big arm, rating wise, no question. Accuracy is okay. The biggest issue with him, and his speed's all right as well, the biggest issue with him is his delivery and his throwing motion is really, really slow. And that's that's a tough thing because we've had a number of different times where we just can't get the ball out quickly enough. And we, because the only 5'11", throw the ball into the offensive and defensive lines. It's tough, but he's our guy moving forward. We have to rock with him. So he's officially going to be a focus player for this week in practice and the next four weeks as well. And we need to see what we have in the rookie quarterback, Jake Meeks. I am interested to see if the Patriots have changed their roster very much, if at all, and they really haven't. It's a lot of these same familiar names just developing. Mac Jones is playing up to an 86 overall. Yeah, temporary boost, but he's still got 99 short accuracy today. Deep accuracy and medium accuracy are above 90 or at 90. Throw powers up to an 88. Mac Jones might dominate today. I can't really even see anyone new to this team except for Quincy Beckham, second year running back out of Tennessee, power back, but I still expect to see mostly Ramondre Stevenson today. They brought in Bryce Huff. That's it. And then some other rookies, especially on the offensive line, are young players. Wow, all right. It's an interesting team. I don't think they look all that bad. Do have an upgrade point for the rookie top 10 pick Dion Dobbins out of LSU. Currently, we're kind of alternating between power and finesse moves. I think I'll do power rusher for today. Keep that as the main scheme fit, but also getting power moves up is good, especially to complement with the speed rush of Arnold Ebicady. And he's got good finesse moves already. Really, really good player. I'm hoping he takes a big step up though at some point. And truly, you know, works toward being a dominant type of player. That's what you expect when you take a player or a pass rusher, top 10 in the draft. Plus one speed for George Johnson's very nice. Remember, this is the superstar undrafted rookie free agent. When you sign him, it goes to hidden, but he does have superstar development. He's not good, but he's getting better with all these upgrades. Speed is close to a 90 now. Zone coverage is close to an 80. Again, still not very good. But, like, worth keeping on the team probably at this point. Someone will probably extend when we when we get to that point in the offseason. But here we go. Hosting the New England Patriots. 83 overall. And maybe better than their overall would suggest. Story of today is the rookie Jake Meeks out of Texas Tech wearing his former colors and making his first career start. And it happens... In front of the home fans in Atlanta. And we'll see what he has in store. First career throw was an interception. I think that's also the case of former Falcons quarterback 
Brett Favre, which sounds funny to say, former Falcons QB Brett Favre, but that's where he was drafted. He was a second round pick. And I want to say his first pass might have been intercepted and his first completion was to himself. I want, I want to say both of those are true. At least the first uh, completion thing is for sure. I want to say his first pass was picked, though. I can confirm. It, Brett Favre did in 1991. Kenny Pickett most recently has done it. So did Jameis Winston, Sam Darnold. Really kicking off some legendary runs there for some players. That pass is completed over the middle. Broken tackle and still going is Juju Smith-Schuster. Can somebody bring this guy down? This could end up being a long day for the defense if they don't want to tackle. Here's a pitch to the outside. Somebody's trying to get there. Gonna have to be Jesse Bates. And he does end up making the tackle there with assistance. Now, Jose Carrington injured on the play. It's a rookie linebacker out of Tennessee. And I don't like that. Now, we do have good depth at linebacker. It's probably, I would say, the position with the most depth on this team. Because you might see Troy Anderson. You might see Deshaun Humphreys. You might see Dylan Stanley. Still have Caden Ellis. Here's a pass wide open to Juju Smith-Schuster again. Zone coverage very much not working out. Jesse Bates is the one who ends up surrendering that catch. Just back spasms for Jose Carrington. We're going to play it on the safe side. Bring in the speedy Troy Anderson, who now sees it's the field. Going to be man coverage against the tight end. Although this is going to be a run. Kind of vacated the middle of the field there. Gave Ramondre Stevenson the cutback lane. Got to get back in rhythm here. Got to not find ourselves out of position. Got to fit the run correctly. And I think we're going to be able to make plays today. It's just going to be a matter of whether we can actually make tackles. And here's a throw over the middle. Great coverage from Jesse Bates to force that incompletion. I'm right there with Dylan Stanley. But linebackers do not jump in this game. I mean, I, I feel like I can't be in much better position with Dylan Stanley to make this play. And it's a good throw for Mac Jones, right? But, I mean, just if you put your hand up or jump, you're getting the football. It basically sails right past his head and then right into the hands of Gesicki, who drops it. But uh, that should be, at the very least, a pass breakup for Dylan Stanley. Get no animation. Extremely frustrating. Mac Jones trying to buy time. Will lob to the end zone. Ends up just being a throwaway. And I think the Patriots are going to take their points here. They're going to take the lead here early, pending a short field goal from Riley Patterson. Should be 3-0 Patriots. All things considered, I think the defense did a really good job of rebounding. That could have been an easy drive for the Patriots, especially on that play that was dropped by Mike Kosicki on that pass over the middle that I was complaining about. But we forced three. That's a win for the defense. And here comes Jake Meeks. Third round pick, if I remember correctly, out of Texas Tech. He's got a big arm. Not the most, uh, I would say, imposing figure on the field. Only 5'11". But again, big time arm. But I think in the Jake Meeks era, we're going to have to really rely on Bijan Robinson to carry the rock for this offense and really carry the offense to success. As Josh Uche is injured. Good start to this game for the Falcons. Let's get him going with a, just an easy completion. Bijan on the screen. We got blockers, but my blockers are running away from defenders. Why are we scared? That's your entire job as an offensive lineman is to go block and hit somebody. And we have Riley Wheeler running to the sideline. Going to throw with Meeks. He's no Trey Lance. It's going to be third down and eight. See if we can keep this drive alive. We're going to throw for Quentin Drummond. And that's just great defense. I really think that was a pretty good throw. But it's the best corner on the Patriots in coverage. Christian Gonzalez on the rookie out of LSU. Quentin Drummond. And Drummond had a step. Maybe if the pass was a little bit out in front or a little higher, you know, we get a better result there. Voice is already struggling coming back. Never a good sign in the first quarter. We're going to try to bounce back, though. But, yeah. Um, good throw. Not a great throw. Not, like, an otherworldly throw that we needed. And Christian Gonzalez is too good and ends up making a really nice play in the football. Third and five. This is where we come out to make a play. Going to press our corners. 
Throw over the middle. Bates, great coverage again. Maybe that needs to be his role. Tight end eraser. Got Mike Kosicki locked down. The electric. Rashid Shahid back to return. His light got put out. Will counter run for Bijan. Just can't quite find the space. Unfortunately, I can really see the offense struggling without Trey Lance. You know, I think you don't realize just how important he is to our team until he goes down. And hopefully it makes some of you appreciate him more as Meeks finally completes a pass down the field. I say finally, we really haven't given him too many opportunities to, to really throw the football. But, you know, I, I hope he's able to show us something in this run. He's got a big time arm. The slow release is really gonna be a problem. A lot of you have said in the comments, just change his throwing animation. You know, have him rework it in the off season. Like that just doesn't really happen. Like in certain instances, sure. But I just think that's not super realistic and not the way I want to run things. It's like we drafted him, to, you know, he threw the way he threw to get to the NFL. And uh, it's just, it's definitely a little bit slow. And it, it hurts the offense at times. Third and inches, I mean, we're going for it even if we don't get it here, but the way they're spread and stacked out like this, it should be pretty easy to pick up this first down. I don't know why they're playing so far off the ball. Fourth and two? I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. We didn't lose yards there. Okay, so the ball, right, is on the 46-yard line. Bijan Robinson gets the carry. Up the middle here. Takes it to the 47, maybe? At least? And then drops and falls back, and that's where they're spotting the ball? It's unbelievable. And I can't challenge it because the game's like, oh, nothing, nothing's broken. I'm going to throw the flag anyway, but this is unlikely to be overturned. But he's not breaking tackles there. He's pushed back. Forward progress is not going to exist. It's going to be such a BS call. It's not going to be a first down. It's still fourth and two. It's unbelievable. I'm going for it. That is, that is absolutely insane. That's an insane call. We don't get this now. It's going to be going to be unreal. Up the middle. There's Bijan. Take this back. Stupid game. That's the end of one. We've still yet to find the scoreboard, but we are close. We're closing in. And, you know, I think I am a little bit excited to see what Jake Meeks can do as a passer. Maybe there are some connections that we usually don't see get the ball very often. Or, you know, like Drake London maybe becomes more of a focal point. Maybe he's got a great combo with Quentin Drummond. Maybe Kyle Pitts, you know, emerges as the biggest threat on the team. But the wide open is Drake London. Meeks hits him, and London down to the one. Dove to the end zone, but was stopped just short by Christian Gonzalez. But what a route from Drake London. Let's take another look, because he is wide open. I'm not sure if that was a coverage bust, or just zone coverage down the field, and they didn't account for Drake London, which I guess could look like a coverage bust. And it was. It was a cover two invert. So, I, I don't even know who would be covering that in that instance because you would picture Christian Gonzalez, the wide corner, to carry that, that skinny post up the field and then with the only defender in like what you see as a hook flat or a curl flat on the field, the purple, he's not going to get the depth required enough to get to Drake London. So maybe just the best play call for their coverage. Of course, we take a delay a game. Create a little bit more space anyway. It's good for yardage. Uh, yeah, I just got distracted, obviously. I'm, hey, listen, I'm an entertainer first and foremost. I really thought I called halfback dive. Let's do it with the quarterback. Meeks up the middle fighting back down to the one. He's got decent speed. Now, the problem with running with him is our depth at quarterback right now is not good. If Jake Meeks gets injured, I don't know what we're going to do. Bijan shut down, loses a yard. The Patriots are set up to stop the run. We're going to pass. Third and goal from the two. Madsen open, sit down, touchdown. A little scary on that throw. I thought that was going to go somewhere 
very far from the intended receiver, but it does find the big body, Neil Madsen. Touchdown, Falcons, and we're going to take the lead here. Good drive. Got a little bit scary after the delay of game, but you know what? That just increases the numbers that we can put up because guess what? We get a passing touchdown from the one, but we get extra rushing yards for our quarterback, really cementing his status as a dual threat. Vanilla Vic, certainly back in Atlanta. Trusting my guys and man, what could go wrong? It's a QB draw with Mac Jones? Why is he so fast? Matt Jones gets nearly 10, sets up third and inches. What was that? I mean, to their credit, last thing I expected was QB draw. Was not ready for Mac Jones to take off on me. Here's third and inches to run. Dylan Stanley right there. Stevenson gets it. Play action, throw over the middle, complete. AJ Terrell allows it. It's Hankins. Try a little zone coverage. Got to be aware of where we need to get to with Dylan Stanley. We got to hit our mark here. I think it's play action. Back up slightly. Wide open. Mac Jones nearly missed the throw, but hits the whole shot. Hankins again. Play action again. Here's a little dump off. That's how they're going to get the ball in the hands of Mike Kosicki. Jesse Bates playing the role of tight end eraser. Really hasn't let Kosicki do anything today. That's the first time he's caught the ball. He's been targeted at least a few times. But that doesn't even really count as a catch allowed against Bates. We got to get to the quarterback. Down goes Jones. Welcome back to the field, Jose Carrington. Injured early on. Making a big play, stepping back out onto the field. Sets up third and 12. Let's give them a little bit of space here. Give them a bit of space. Get depth. Don't let them pick up the first. Throwing deep over the middle. Not sure if that was a throwaway. Patriots still going to get points out of this, but incomplete. Fourth and 12. And they bring out Patterson yet again. Try to make this a one-point ball game. Still plenty of time for us to answer and plenty of a, a time for us to run the ball with Bijan if we want to. We can be a one-dimensional offense. As long as we're able to move the ball, four minutes is more than enough time to run, run, run. The problem is, and I've said this you know, so many times, and I, I go against it sometimes as well, but on second and long, it is tough to run the ball. Second and nine, because maybe you're setting yourself up for third and six if you run the ball and uh, that's just not going to do it a lot of the time you try to get more yardage try to move the chains but first down is a rundown but when they have brennan schooler a uh, texas legend in the gap there it's a uh, it's difficult to run the football as one texas player tackles another second and nine i try passing here I do want Neil Madsen to be an option for me, though. Maybe a little chip, a little check down. Madsen with speed, and Madsen's going to be right there. Marked just shy, third and inches. I think this is a good spot to hand Bijan the football. Got to make sure we don't get a BS spot like we did earlier. I mean, that was unbelievable. Ended up getting it anyway. Third and inches, up the middle. Bijan's there, moves the chains, and our methodical offense continues. Now, we don't have infinite time right we can't just take keep taking you know 30 seconds off the clock every time we snap the ball maybe one more play here before the two minute warning Bijan will cut back and that is first down i believe no third and inches two minute warning Bijan, the quick rest we could go yeah rpo bubble screen option of kyle pitts Gonna hand the ball off to Bijan, though. Look at the speed. And that actually puts Robinson in the zone. Freight train, as long as we don't get tackled for a loss. He should be a monster. There is a flag. It's gotta be roughing the passer, right? Roughing the passer on the screen. That's a really nice play for us. We'll take the 15 if they want to give it to us. That's what I was worried about. Now, it's so bizarre to get a hold at the start of a slip screen. Now, it is the right tackle, Jedrick Wills. So maybe a little bit more believable as he's not releasing there. But where's the hold? Are they saying because his arm got around the back of Judon? But he's not he's he's not really even holding him, though. It's not even around the back. That's his hair. He's just touching his shoulder. There is no hold there. Now it's first and 20. Get a little bit more space. Get Drummond to the outside. 
We're going to take a deep shot down the field. Quinton Drummond overshot him. I'll tell you what, Drummond loves to get open down the field. Just been tough to hit him. How about hitting Bijan Robinson out of the backfield? That's not English. Bijan Robinson on a wheel wide open. I don't think I opened my mouth when I was saying any of those words previously. That's what it sounded like. It was ridiculous. It sounded like an auctioneer, but you couldn't understand anything. 45 seconds to go here in the first half. Algier into the game. Let's give him the football. Tyler Algier. Steps out of bounds at the five. Clock stops with 39 seconds left to go in the first half. Bijan back out here. They're giving us ample space to run the ball up the middle. Let's do it. Freight train activated. They don't want to get in the way. Train's coming. Get off the tracks. And they did. Bijan into the end zone. Something I've said what feels like a hundred times in this series. Bijan's been absolutely incredible, obviously. And it makes it a lot easier when guys like number eight kind of get out of the way. Part the Red Sea for Bijan Robinson. And uh, just let, let him walk into the end zone. That was great. Bit of a slow start, but we got a 14-6 lead now. And that is probably what it's going to be going into the half. The Patriots do have three timeouts. It's not, you know, out of the realm of possibility that they could end up scoring maybe at least a field goal with three timeouts. But they're going to have to move the football first. And drops are not going to help them on first down. Fair little zone defense. Keep them in front. Didn't get where we wanted there. Going to be roughing the passer. Hit... Mac Jones with Kyrie Yankee late. Well, that's going to help. Bit of a mental error there. That, that gives the Patriots the football on the 50. That is a huge penalty. I mean, that is a massive, massive penalty. Surely this is not going to be a run. Kind of faked it. Another pass complete to Gesicki. It seems like the only time they can get him the ball is either out of the backfield or on these really quick checkdowns Anything vertical, not really working. That's largely in part due to Jesse Bates, who's having a really nice game. They're over the middle, probably got a bit too much depth. Juju brings it down to the 35. I need to figure out how to land these hit sticks over the middle. I don't know why I'm so bad at doing it. It's almost incredible. But it's just, I feel like it's really tough to lock in on these guys. 10 seconds to go in the half. This final timeout's got to come in at some point. There it is. Nine seconds to go. They're going to try a field goal. I mean, do they probably do it without the extra 15? I think so. They really were moving the football at will there. But we gave them the extra 15 for free. So, unfortunately, we'll never know what would have happened. But uh, hopefully those three points don't come back to bite us. Still got a lead going into the half, unless something crazy happens here. But with the electric ability of Quentin Drummond, you never know. We could take those points right back. Not this time. Maybe we take a deep shot here, though. Maybe somebody gets open over the top. We just check down to avoid the quick pressure from New England. Okay. Again, with Meeks, release is really slow. Football's really got to come out quickly. If there's any type of pass rush even close... He's going to get a throw out of sack, interception. He's going to fumble. Bad things are going to happen, and we need those to not happen. It's a close game. I would say maybe closer than it should be, but the Patriots have played pretty well, and I don't think we've been all that bad on offense. I just think it's the growing pains of a rookie quarterback making his first start. We've scored a bunch of times, just not every time we've touched the ball. Defend the medium pass. We'll get the football to start the third quarter. We're in a good spot. You just got to keep it up, really. Our defense is yet to allow a touchdown. That's always good. Need the offense to uh, get a few more points up on the board. Bijan's still in the zone, ready for the second half. It's a good run to start the second half. A little bit more than 10. And yeah, we're really going to try and lean on him, especially while he's in the zone. He's a monster player. And sometimes that's going to mean throwing him the ball as well. Obviously a dual threat. He's been incredible as a receiver. And he was probably open down the field there. I just didn't trust Jake Meeks to make that throw. But that's okay. Second and seven. We're approaching midfield, as I always say. About four down territory, just based on field position here. We're at the 44. If we're stopped, you know, let's say it's fourth and one. And we're certainly going to run the ball here, of course. 
But we're obviously going to go for it because the punt, it's just not impactful enough of a play. You know, maybe from your own side of the field it's different, but if you're, like, basically at midfield, I don't really see a reason to punt a lot of the time, especially when your offense has been able to move the ball and especially done so on the ground. Patriots have made a couple of plays, but it's really been a lot of Bijan Robinson up to this point. We'll see if we can get the corner there. Bijan breaking tackles, and it's another easy gain at 10+. plus. Bijan nearly at the century mark. 17 carries for 96 yards. Algier going to give him a bit of a breather. But we're going to keep up the same methodology. Run the football, and it's a bit of a different story with Bijan out of the game. The blockers just decided not for Algier. Get Bijan back out there. We'll see what we can do. And I actually, I love the spacing on this because I think Quentin Drummond could be open right away. And he is up the middle, middle up the seam. Up the middle. <laughs> My wife. Hopefully a lot of you know Borat and I just... I don't just sound like an insane person as we check down to Bijan. I was dangerous because we risk him getting tackled for loss there and getting out of the zone. Do pick up a yard, though. And a tackle of zero is not necessarily a TFL either. But that was definitely a little bit risky. Bijan broke in tackle. Be third and seven. He's almost at 20 carries already. Really been feeding him the football. Maybe play action on third and seven. It's a bit risky, but I think they might think we're running the ball because we really have been. Linebackers kind of freeze, but it's a boot right out into Josh Uche's waiting arms. I guess he's back from injury. Those bootlegs are so bad. They're just not good at all. And this is the problem because there's no threat of pressure here at all. Braxton Jones needs to help on the tight end. This should be like a chip and release for Madsen. But he almost goes on an island. This is a big problem with Madden. Is we have needless, needless one-on-ones with tight ends against edge rushers. Like, look at my left tackle, Braxton Jones. He goes over to help and he just goes, eh, nah, I'll block nobody. And I'm not controlling the player here. It's following the predestined bootleg. There's nothing we can do. It's so dumb. They're broken plays that are consistently broken year after year after year. And, oh, I'm so stupid because, oh, uh, I should just guess that they're broken. I should know, oh, I can't call that play. It doesn't work properly. The blocking is broken. I, it makes me incredibly frustrated. Why would I leave my tight end in a one-on-one -on -one against their best pass rusher for no reason? Matt Judon maybe taking a step back if he's even on the team anymore. I don't remember. Maybe we've seen him, but yeah, Uche is great. Just, uh, I mean, a frustrating sequence. It's nice to, you know, go up eight-point game. Still one possession, but at least we extend our lead. But it, it should have been more. Should have been more. Throw over the middle! And caught. This guy has been driving me nuts today. Hankins' third catch for 61 yards. And I think he is a receiver. But just wearing number 22, I don't like as a receiver at all. It's a running back number on offense. Obviously, you know, DB on uh, defense there. As that is nearly intercepted by Deshaun Humphreys. It was thrown right to him. And he just doesn't really even try to catch it. Second and 10. It's a run to the outside. I mean, everyone's on the ground. Stevenson touchdown. I mean, you knew it instantly. I don't know what happened there. I really don't know what happened. Like, we did have a mid-blitz thing going on. But it's when Gesicki's able to block two guys. And he, so here's what needs to happen. If Ebikati's getting blocked to the outside, he's essentially the edge setter here. So what Javon Holland needs to do is loop back inside Bates is pushed to the ground. That sucks. But Javon Holland needs to take a way better route. See, this is another problem. And I, I don't know how you fix it, but the defenders almost act like there are no blockers on the field. Or they, they don't get that there's two people in front of them. Holland is just tracking the path of Ramondre Stevenson. But without realizing that if you continue going... 
that way, you're going to run into them. The, the, you know, the defender AI needs to be smarter to know, hey, I can't run that way. Let me go back inside to cover the open lane and essentially fit the run correctly, and that's not a touchdown. Patriots gonna go for two to try to make this a tie game. Let's press, let's play underneath. Still could be a run here, although it's not. Check down. I don't know why Deshaun Humphrey's first step was to the inside, and then when we go outside, of course he cuts it back inside. A lot of inside outside there, but this this is extremely frustrating. Again, it's just stupid defenders. Pass to the inside. Humphrey's first step for some reason with the ball already in the air is back to the inside. I don't know why that's the case. Lance. And then we switch on. We try to go after him. I'm, I'm hitting A here, but... Just try to tackle AJ Terrell instead. I'm sure it's user error somehow, but man, that's uh, just a lot of frustrating sequences there. Drummond, house call. Nope, big return to the 39. Not quite enough speed, but a lot of it. Okay, 17-17. It's a good ball game. Maybe some self-inflicted wounds in this one. Haven't turned over the football, which is good. And we don't really turn over the ball very much anymore. Everyone always talks about all the interceptions I throw. We really don't turn over the football that much anymore. It's always like a season one thing, and then I kind of learn how to play. But, um, it's just defensively, it's probably, it's bad pursuit angles for me, personally, and the game, also. And just some stupid things and not getting animations. Just some frustrating things that I, I don't want to have to deal with, but I don't have a choice. Looked like there was a ton of space there, but we're actually not able to find enough. Fourth and four. So, here's why we're going to line up to go for it. Is because, and Bijan... Seems like he's not going to be on the field. We're going to line up to go for it because we can always just take the delay a game and punt if we don't like what we see. Do I snap the ball here? So they would take over around midfield. This is probably a punt spot, I'm going to say. We get a little bit more space. It's five yards of field position at the end of the day by taking the delay a game there. Totally fine with that. Especially from where we are. Gets us a bit more space to, to work with. I don't know. Let me know what you guys would have done in that spot. Just didn't really like the matchup enough. Didn't really like what I was seeing enough. And I think when our defense has played pretty well, you know, why risk in that spot? Like, just giving them great field position. Make them work it down the field. Make it a little bit more difficult. And uh, it's just going to be what happens. 17-17. Pretty even numbers across the board which is a problem. We need to play better on defense. This drive, we're really going to impose our will. We've got pretty much no pressure today. I think Jose Carrington sacked him, but none from the actual defensive line. And that would have been a great opportunity for pressure, and the pass is completed. Mac Jones with a great throw under pressure. Finds his receiver who catches it. I don't even know how that ball floated in there. We might have to dial up the heat on Mac Jones. Turn up the heat here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Make Mac Jones make some plays. Wide open. That's, I mean, insane how open that is. Michelle Blitz. Play action. Get off that. Wide open receivers again. Hankins might be over 100 at this point. He might have 50% of Mac Jones uh, passing yards here. He's up to 99 yards on five catches. The pressure is not necessarily working. How do we shut down Mac Jones and the Patriots? That's the question of the hour. I don't know that there's an answer. Play action. Don't fall for it. Throw over the middle. Complete. And down to the 10 are the Patriots. This drive has been way too easy. And we're trying to do things to stop them, but they're just... They're beating zone coverage very easily. They're beating man coverage when we call that. They're beating our blitzes. Throw over the middle. It's... Okay coverage, but not good enough because it's a gain of seven. Six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Patriots are closing in. I'm going to pass commit here. If it's a run, it's a run. But we're going to pass commit. Got two by twos at a gun here. It is a pass, and it is completed. 
third and goal from the one. You could very easily see a pass or a run here. Jones under pressure. Down he goes. Jesse Bates and Deshaun Humphrey synchronized celebration as they join the band and finally bring back and uh, bring down Mac Jones again. Patriots looking to take the lead here, 20 to 17. That's exactly what they do, or do they? Because we have a roughing the kicker. It's going to be an automatic first down, half the distance to the goal. Javon Holland, playing on special teams, has given the Patriots a new lease on life and making me want to end mine. Here's first and goal from the six. Unreal. Stevenson, shut down, no game. Jesse Bates, having a great game today. Got to keep it up. Keep the Patriots out of the end zone. The undrafted rookie free agent Johnston out of the field. John Graves out onto the field. It's the B team. I need you to play like the A team. Jones might run. He's going to throw across the field and out of bounds. Third and goal. We need another goal line stand here. Throw over the middle. Touchdown. Hankins, of course. Chris Hankins. Yeah, having a great game. Beats A.J. Terrell in the slant. Really impossible route to cover. And the Patriots don't get three. They're going to get seven. Unbelievable penalty. That's two penalties that have resulted in a lot of points for the Patriots. The field goal to end the first half. And again, they might have had it anyway, but we gave it to them essentially. And now instead of three, they're getting seven because of Javon Holland. We're down by a touchdown, four minutes to play. We need something. And at this point, we might be playing for overtime. I haven't really thrown the ball very much today. But we might have to on this drive. Drummond finally catches the football. Only one drop in this game, I think. But that's, you know, still frustrating. I think that might be his first catch. We've targeted him before. But that's his second catch, actually, for 29. Bijan. Oh, still on his feet, actually. That's the first down. He's going to try running the football. Oh, good blocks. Bijan gets six. I'd like, I think, two more plays, but we might only get one here. Probably only get one before the two-minute warning. Yeah, this will be our last snap. Gonna get Meeks on the move. Throw on the run. Hitting Kyle Pitts. It's a stop just short. Just couldn't really find a spot. I was comfortable throwing the football there with Meeks. We end up settling for a throw on the run. Sets up third and short. Bijan guarantees us the first down. Could have been more, probably... But just didn't want to risk it. And I, I, you risk what? Not a fumble necessarily, but didn't want to risk getting caught up uh, on a block or something. Just wanted to find the open space. And Meeks is sacked. We're going to waste our first time out. All right, let's settle in here. Second and 17. A minute and a half to play. Down by a touchdown. Screen's going to work. Good blocks. Bijan out at the 39. Going to be third and five. Obviously, four down territory. A field goal is not good enough here. Third and five. Sacked. Just ran back and lost yardage. Couldn't have done anything worse. Fourth and 14. Gotta have it. Kyle Pitts airmailed. That's going to be the ball game. Oh, that's a frustrating loss. We're going to end up losing by seven. I mean, we will need an absolute miracle. Gotta get a fumble. And it's got to take no time. It, it's going to be impossible. Second and nine. Again, game likely over at this point. 41 seconds left to go. I mean, they can just end the game. It is over. They're going to go victory formation. And uh, they could just punt the ball out of bounds or do nothing because it's going to take a second. 40 seconds. Game clock is... Very slightly ahead of the play clock. They don't even have to snap this. That's a tough loss. It's a tough loss. They do end up snapping it. They kick it out of bounds with one second to go. They didn't need to do that. We're on the seven-yard line. We need a massive touchdown. I mean, one second left. See what we got. Meeks rolling out. Throwing on the run. Finding Bijan Robinson! 
Who's tackle at midfield, game over. Tried to get him moving out on the run. Bijan kind of snuck out, but in the end it was not enough. A second of life there at the end, but not enough. Why are we fucking dancing on the sideline? I got coaches just like getting sturdy or whatever. I just, you're fired. Jake Meeks, you know, not all too bad stat-wise, but that's why stats can be misleading. 16 of 22 for 218, completing 72% of his passes, just like Mac Jones. Bit of a touchdown, no picks, averaging 10 yards per throw. I mean, these are great numbers, but I don't know that he played all that well, as numbers could be misleading, especially with yards after catch and things like that. Rushing, Bijan was great. 23 attempts for 118 yards, touchdown. Letting up that 51-yard run to Ramondre Stevenson really hurt us. I think we did a good job containing him other than that, obviously. Receiving, Chris Hankins is the bane of my existence. Bijan had seven catches for 118 yards. A lot of checkdowns, a lot of throwing to the running back. I mean, 118 yards of Jake Meek's numbers came from just checkdowns to Bijan Robinson or, you know, screens, design throws to him, things like that. A big play there at the end. But, um... Yeah, tough game. Obviously got to play better than this. And I think it really, as much as you can blame the offense in some spots, and we do have to play better, uh, I got to be better on defense. Pursuit angles, not allowing extra yardage. Obviously, penalties are brutal. But the Javon Holland roughing the kicker was not me. And yet, we lose the game as a result. Brutal way to end it. But... That's the way it goes sometimes. We're going to drop. And we, we said that they might be better than expected. But we are going to drop here. And I said we could lose all four of these games without Trey Lance. It probably wouldn't be too much of an issue. At the same time, I don't want that to happen. Preferably, we don't lose every game. I think we're, what, 8-3 and three now? Still a very good record. But I'd like it to be a little bit better than that. I'd like it to be, oh, I don't know, 9-2. Plus one speed for Lindstrom up to 77. Absurd. He's a great athlete, though. But that is going to do it. Nine and three. Not nine and three. Nine and three. Ten and two would have been nice. Week 14, we got the Rams. I don't know how good they're going to be at this point. Only an 83 overall, but overalls can be deceiving. See what that game has in store. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Take it easy.